Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Akua, whatever time it may be. I'm just so honored and blessed to be able to share this time with you. If you're new here, my name is Abel. I am the worship leader here at Akua Church. And in case you missed it, last week we talked a little bit about worship during the service. Um, and as we go into this time of worship where we sing, I just need us to understand that worship isn't a song. It's a self. Worship is what we feel in our hearts when, when, we, when we sing or we serve or do anything that glorifies God. So if you've never sang in service before, that's okay. I, I'm not going to ask you to do the, just that yet. But what I do want us to do is I want you to, in your heart, sing out, believe these words. Because here at Akuo, we're all just imperfect people pursuing a perfect God. And the beautiful thing about it is that it doesn't start with our pursuit of God. It actually starts with God's pursuit of us. We are like treasured prizes. We are his prized possession. He loves us so incredibly much, and he never stops pursuing us. So no matter what you did last night, what you did throughout the week, if you don't feel worthy, know that he's still chasing you, and he will never, ever stop. So sing this song out with me. Come on. Come on, let's sing this truth over ourselves. We're heaven's spawn creations, it's pride and adoration, treasures woven by his love. His careful hands they hold us, safe within his promise of calling and of destiny. His pride and adoration, treasures woven by His love. His careful hands. His careful hands, they hold us safe within His promise of calling and of destiny. So we'll sing out to Him. So I will sing of all You've done. chasing me His kindness overwhelming and hope for me unending He's never given up on me So I will sing So I will sing of all you've done And I'll remember how far To the end, you are faithful, faithful to the end, unto the end, unto the end, unto. in the day there wasn't a day that you weren't by my side and there wasn't a day that you let me fall in all of my life your love has been true and with all of my life I will worship you and there wasn't a day that you weren't by my side. And there wasn't a day that you let me fall. In all of my life, your love has been true. And with all of my life, I will worship you. I will worship you. You with all I am, with all I am, cause 
Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me, will follow me. Yes, surely your goodness and mercy will follow me, will follow me. in the day that you weren't by my side and there wasn't a day that you let me fall and all of my life your love has been true and with all of my life I will worship faithful through it all you are faithful in the depths you are faithful at the heights and in my failures Lord you never stop pursuing you never stop pursuing in the depths or at the heights you see like a treasured prize A love so deep And powerful I've come to find it Inexhaustible In the depths Or at the heights You seek me out like a treasured prize A love so deep And powerful I've come to find it Inexhaustible And it never runs out on me And I know it never will Never stops chasing me, and I know it never will. For I will see, for I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, in the land of the living. For I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in the land of the living we will see you Lord we will see your love like a river rushing or a fountain flowing I've seen the grace that never stops pursuing It's a love so grandeur, exceeding goodness It's taken captive every lofty hindrance And it never runs out on me oh, And I know it never will yeah, and it never stops chasing me, and I know it never will, for I will see, for I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, in the land of the living, for I will see the of the 
of the Lord In the land of the living In the land of the living For I will see the goodness of the Lord In the land of the living In the land of the living For I will see the goodness of the Lord In the land of the living You see me through the valleys Lead me up the mountains You're my faithful champion You've taken every burden Lifted every worry You're the hope that lifts my head See me through the valleys, lead me up the mountains. You're my faithful champion. You've taken every burden, lifted every worry. You're the hope that lifts my head. You see me through the up the mountains you're my faithful champion you've taken every burden lifted every worry you're the hope that lifts my head for I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the Lord in the land of the living in the land of you see me through the valleys lead me up the mountains you're my faithful champion you've taken every burden lifted every worry you're the whole my head you've seen me through the valleys lead me up the mountains you're my faithful champion you've taken every burden lifted every worry you're the hope that lifts my head So I will sing of all you've done And I'll remember how far you've carried me From beginning until the end You are faithful, faithful to Father, we thank you so much for being the God that is faithful even when we are not. God, and we just choose to look towards you. We choose to love you, Father. With the song of our hearts, we glorify you and we praise you the best that we know how. So we pray all these things in your son's precious name, the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone said, amen. You guys. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hey, Akuo Church, it's great to be with you once again for another week of services. Today, we are continuing in this series called Learn To. In this entire series, we will be doing a deep dive of the four L's of Akuo. The four L's of Akua are just an explanation of how we will bring people into community with Jesus and one another. And the ways that we're going to do that are by listening to God, loving people, leading by empowering, and linking to our community. We're finishing up the first part of our series that is focusing on the listen, the listening to God side. And we are set out with this goal that by the end of this section, 
you would have a great idea on how to listen to God's voice because we believe that anyone can hear from God. Now, when we started planning this series back in July, we knew that we wanted to get our friend and Board of Trustees member, Bree Solo, to deliver the message for one of the sermons. So we had a meeting where we planned everything out from the graphics to the topics of every single sermon to uh, some of the songs that we wanted able to play during this time. Now, during that, we asked Bree to present what she wanted to talk about. And she explained that she had two different ideas. Then she went on to present both of them. And at the end of, of her explaining what these two topics were going to be, she was like, well, which ones did I preach? And in that Zoom meeting, it felt like we had a consensus. She needed to do both of them. So today, Bree is back to close out the listen part of our Learn To series. So without further ado, here's Bree. The first time I heard from God was in college, and that moment changed everything. I was at church and during worship, there was this chorus that we were told to sing on repeat uh, many times over and it went, you are worthy. And in my heart, I was thinking, Jesus, you are worthy. But what was coming out of my mouth was, I am unworthy. And I just remember Christ singing, like everyone else is singing, you are worthy. And I'm Christ singing, I'm unworthy. And it was this, just this dark, ugly moment. And I had asked, I said, God, why do you even love me? During that season of life, I was making choices that I knew that God was not proud of. And because of it, I thought I was unworthy of his love. And that moment I questioned God and I said, why do you love me? I got a response that I wasn't expecting. I heard an audible voice from above say, because you were worthy. And I remember looking up instantly and going, God? And then I remember looking around because I'm like, did anybody else hear that? Um, but I realized it was God and his voice was commanding and gentle at the same time. And he was speaking to me personally, reminding me how much he loved me. And in that moment, I was overcome with such peace and relief and joy. And I was actually able to finish out the song singing, you are worthy. That moment changed everything. I have heard from God in many ways and many times since, but this is my undeniable, unforgettable, God-changing moment. And some of you have one too, and maybe you're thinking of it right now. One that stands out among the others, a, a, a time where God met you where you were and spoke to your heart. And if you don't have one yet, and I say yet, uh, I wanna encourage you because one is coming. You know, God speaks to us in many ways, and today we're going to cover those many ways, but not until we first cover the why. The reason why God speaks to us is because he loves us and he wants to have a relationship with us. From the beginning, we read about relationship in Genesis 1, And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. I want to pause for a moment. That us and our is a relationship between God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, also known as the Holy Trinity. And that relationship existed at the beginning of time, and we were created to be invited into it. In verse 27, God says, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. The man and woman were Adam and Eve, and they had a close personal relationship with God. And we read where God walked and talked with them. This close personal relationship ended, however, when sin came into the picture. You see, Adam and Eve believed a lie from Satan and did the one thing God told them not to do. And as a result, they got kicked out of the garden. This wrong choice, also known as sin, it caused a separation between them and God, and it affected negatively many generations to follow. But that didn't stop God from talking to man, it just changed the format. We read in Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. So God would speak to the prophets, the messengers of God, 
And then the prophets would take that message and give it to the people. So for example, God would speak to the prophet Moses, and then Moses would speak those words to the people. It was close and personal to the prophets, but it wasn't to everyone else. But close and personal was God's plan for everyone, not just the prophets. God's plan to restore relationship with him and man included Jesus. Jesus, also called Emmanuel, which means God with us. So to literally mean God was with us and he was walking and talking with us. So when Jesus came, he not only walked and talked with us, he also took our punishment of sin on the cross so our sins could be forgiven to get rid of that separation that man caused. The temple was torn from the top to bottom and we got invited back into that close and personal relationship with God. And when Jesus finished that part of God's plan, he went back to heaven and God gave us his spirit, also known as the Holy Spirit, also known as the breath of God or wind or breeze of God, which is what we read in Genesis 3.8. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife, so Adam and Eve, heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. That was God's spirit present and speaking to Adam and Eve. And because of what Jesus did, we get to have God's spirit, his Holy Spirit with us again, which means we can hear just like Adam and Eve heard. We can hear like the prophets heard. God restore the relationship back to the way it was from the beginning. This is a super condensed timeline from creation to now, but I did that because I don't want us to miss the main reason. I don't want us to miss the why. He wants a relationship with you because he loves you. And he speaks to you because he loves you, which leads to the big idea for today. God speaks to you in many ways because he loves you. So what are the many ways that he speaks to us? First, it's important to know that it's personal. So how he speaks to me is not how he's going to speak to you. And so be careful to not compare how God speaks to me to you or someone else to you. It's personal and unique. It's a personal and unique relationship. And if you are a note taker, now would be the time to get out a pen and paper uh, because we're gonna go through the many ways that God speaks to us. One of the ways that God speaks to us is through the Bible. He loves us enough to have what he has said and done written down on paper so we can always have that with us. We can always go back to that and read God's promises and the good things that he's done and the good things that he's said. When you're reading the Bible, God is speaking to you. And we also get to use the Bible as the foundation to test every other way that God speaks so we can confirm that that is indeed God's voice. So the Bible is your foundation. When you hear God in other ways, you always go back to the Bible to compare it and make sure that there is no contradiction because God does not contradict himself. Another way that God speaks is through impressions. This is actually a more common way that God speaks to us and we often completely miss it because we don't realize that it's God speaking to us. So one can be a feeling. You just feel something and you can't really explain it. So for example, if you walk into HEB and you just like feel this heaviness and you just like feel this love for people, um, that's God speaking to you. And he's saying, I feel that too. And, um, and I care about you and I care about others. He's just sharing his heart with you because he loves you. Um, it can also be a knowing uh, where you just know something that you hadn't known before. And uh, that is God speaking to you through a knowing. Uh, it can also be when you're reading the Bible, a verse just stands out in a way that it's never stood out before. And maybe you've read it hundreds of times. And this time is the time that it just stands out and it's just impressed upon you. God is speaking to you. Uh, and again, this is a more common way that he speaks, but we tend to miss it. Another way that God speaks is through visions. And there's actually two types of visions, a closed vision and an open vision. So for the first one, a closed vision, um, I'm going to explain it to you with an example. So if I was to tell you, imagine a purple elephant. You wouldn't be able to see the purple elephant right in front of you, but you would see it in your mind's eye. 
and maybe you're even thinking about this purple elephant and seeing it right now. Um, that's a closed vision and God speaks that way. And the other one is an open vision, one where you are actually seeing like with, you know, with your natural eye, you're seeing around you, but all of a sudden this picture just comes right in front of you. So you're actually seeing two things. You're seeing what's around you, but you're also seeing this picture. So you're seeing in the natural realm and in this, and then in the spiritual realm. Um, so an example for two that I've had, um, I had, I've had many closed visions. Um, I have more of those. And I had one that really stood out. It was one time during worship, I see an orange in the screen of my mind. I'm like, an orange? God, what does that mean? And he said, orange you, glad I chose you. <laughs> it's like, God knows how to speak to me. Like, I love humor. And so I'm like, yes, I'm so thankful you chose me. It was just this beautiful worship moment. Um, so, and if you get something that you're not really sure what it is, you can ask God. Um, and then I had an, so my open vision, I've only had one open vision. I was driving on the highway and I think it's funny that God would give me an open vision while I'm driving, <laughs> but I see this vision of a boy who's 18 months old. I just knew he was 18 months old. He was in the back seat of my car and I only had one kid at the time. And I'm like, God, are you trying to share something with me? I had to wait four and a half years for that vision to come to pass. And it was exactly the day that my son turned 18 months old and he was behind me in the, in, in the car. And I felt like God saying, do you remember that vision that I showed you? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, this is it right now. And it just, that was just God speaking so beautifully to me in that season. Another way that God speaks is through dreams. Our body is asleep, but our spirit is awake and we're not distracted. So God gets to speak to our spirit. Most dreams are symbolic in nature, meaning you're going to have to interpret it. And you're gonna to have to get some information to try to figure out what God is really trying to speak to you. And so sometimes it can be helpful to reach out to others or write down what you got, every detail, like what you saw, what you knew, what you felt, and just keep asking God about it and saying, what are you trying to show me? And sometimes it's a theme. He's trying to show you a theme. So lately I've had lots of dreams with the same theme and the theme has been deception. And what God's trying to show me is like, open up your natural eye and open up your spiritual eyes to understand and see the deception around you. I'm trying to speak to you because I love you and I wanna show you something that you might not know otherwise. So again, dreams are symbolic. Another way that God speaks is through angels. We read in the Bible where an angel visited Mary and told her that she would have a son named Jesus. And another angel visits Joseph to comfort him and share the exact same message. And I'll also share, I have a friend that saw an angel when she was in the hospital. She was very sick, she was in the hospital. It's a very stressful environment. And she said she saw an angel walk up to the door of her room and it was as tall as, like was up to the door frame. And he was wearing this gray cloak and he had just this very peaceful presence, a very commanding presence. And while seeing it scared her, though she felt peace. And it just took that very stressful situation and made it peaceful. And she was actually able to fall asleep. So God will show up to us and give us comfort through angels. That's one of the ways that he speaks to us. Another way that God speaks is through an, his audible voice, also known as a still small voice or a gentle whisper. Um, God will speak to us audibly. Um, I shared at the beginning of this talk that I heard his audible voice and I've heard it many times since and each time is a little bit different. Um, so don't think that it's the same way every time he's going to speak to you in different ways that you need. Um, and if you're, you know, hearing this and you're like, well, I've not heard of God's audible voice. Remember it's personal and intimate and unique. So he's going to speak to you in the way that you're going to hear from him in the way that you need it. Um, this is not the most common way that God speaks though. So if you don't ever hear his audible voice, there's nothing wrong with you because again, it's a personal and close relationship that's unique between you and him. Another way that God speaks is through memories. If you have a memory that just randomly pops in your mind, don't just think like, oh, that's random or, oh, I remember that. And then like not give it another thought. Be like, hey God, you just popped that into my mind. What did you want to share? Or just like go with that memory for a little bit uh, because he's speaking to you through your memories. Another way that God speaks, and this might be brand new to you, smells. <laughs> 
Uh, God speaks to us through smells, and smells can also trigger memories. So there's a little bit of overlap there. Um, I will share that my aunt one time, she was telling me, she's like, Brie, during worship, I had this like, I, I could smell this like woodsy smell. And she was describing it. And I was like, wait, wait, what? I've had that. And what it did is it confirmed this smell that I have smelt growing up, like my whole life. I still smell it to this day. And I just thought it was just like, oh, that's a random woodsy smell. Like, why am I smelling that? Um, that was actually God speaking to me, um, which is also why it's so important to be around other people that hear from God and share their God stories, because it can encourage you, but it can also confirm that God has been speaking to you this whole time and you might not have recognized it. And now you do. Another way that God speaks is through numbers. Numbers have meaning. And sometimes we completely miss it. Like we're reading in the Bible and we miss what God is trying to speak. So for example, the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 disciples. Uh, in fact, the number 12 is mentioned 187 times in the Bible. And a quick Google search will show you that 12 means God's power and authority. It also means completeness. Um, and so I have this friend that God speaks to her through numbers. She's very like mathematically driven. And so it would make sense that God would speak to her through numbers. And so whenever I send her a text, she'll, res she'll respond back with, oh my gosh, this time, these numbers mean this, you just confirmed this. And I'm like, wow, it's amazing that God speaks to you that way. Uh, so God does speak through numbers. Another way that God speaks is through colors. Colors have meaning. Uh, so if you're walking through nature and certain colors are just popping out at you, certain colors are impressed upon you. Um, maybe you're having a vision of a certain color. Maybe you're praying and you see the color blue. Um, God is speaking to you through color. And a quick Google search, if you type in colors and, and biblical meaning, you'll find the very meaning to that color. And then you can pray into it and you can ask God, what are you trying to show me? Um, he's speaking to you through colors because he loves you. God speaks through peace. I had mentioned in my last talk that God speaks through peace. You know, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And so if you get an impression of peace, if you're feeling peace, then take heart because God is with you and he's speaking to you. And you might be kind of noting, you might be noticing this overlap where you're like, oh, there's a vision and an impression and there's a smell that draws memories. Yes, God is speaking in many ways and they're kind of all connected. Another way that God speaks is through miracles. Miracles happen because God is restoring something to the way that it was. So for example, Jesus, he's a miracle. God restored relationship through Jesus. God is speaking through Jesus. Um, a, a, a miracle could be that your health has improved miraculously. God is restoring your health to how it was. So miracles are a way that God speaks to us. And there are many more ways, but this is a great list to get started. Um, there's actually 12 in this list. And if you remember when I talked about 12, uh, it means God's authority, God's power and completeness. I feel like this is a really great list to start with and just really connect with God. And if we're going through this and you're like, I've like, God's never talked to me in that way. Ask him. You can ask him. Um, I do that all the time. I will be with someone and they share that God speaks to them. So for example, through numbers, I'm like, I've never had that. So I asked God one time and not long after he did speak to me through numbers. Um, so ask him. It's a relationship. Again, it's close and personal. And so ask him. We read in Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. So here's how we tune our ears to be able to hear God when he's speaking. One is spend quality time with God alone. If you want to hear from him, you need to spend time with him. A great place to start is in the Bible. A verse gets highlighted to you. Memories flood your mind. Maybe you go outside on a walk uh, or a run, or maybe you just go outside and go into nature. You walk the trails. You're going to be smelling things. Memories are going to be coming. Colors are coming. Just be consistent about connecting with God, and you're going to start finding patterns of when he speaks. For me, he speaks during my naps. So I try to make sure I schedule naps in my day. <laughs> uh, Pastor Hamby hears from God when he cuts the grass. So when you find the ways that God speaks to you consistently, then start doing those things consistently. 
Um, spending quality time with him is so important. It's also important that you spend quality time with others that hear God's voice. Because the more you spend time with them and they're sharing their God moments, you're going to learn more ways that he speaks. And it might even confirm a way he's already been speaking to you. And there are so many more ways that he speaks to us. And it's all because he loves you. He speaks to you because he loves you. I want to go back to that story of Adam and Eve for a moment. To me, the saddest verse in the Bible is Genesis 3.8. This is after they've sinned and they've realized they made a huge mistake. Genesis 3.8 reads, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man and said to him, Where are you? The where are you? Because their sin brought shame, and that's why they were hiding. But what you may not have noticed is that even though they sinned, it didn't stop God from pursuing them and talking to them. And your sin doesn't stop God from pursuing you and talking to you either. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to sin. And it's because you're human. You're not perfect. God knows that. So I want to ask you a question. In your imperfections, in your mistakes, are you hiding from God like Adam and Eve did? Is God saying to you, where are you? I know what it's like to hide in shame, to question your worth, to question God's love for you. And when I asked God, why do you even love me? His response was, because you're worthy. And that word wasn't just for me, it's for you too. You know, God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross to pay for your sins because you're worthy. And he sent the Holy Spirit to be with you, to comfort you, and to guide you because you're worthy. He restored the broken relationship because you are worthy. And he speaks to you because you are worthy. And he loves you because you are worthy. And you don't have to fully understand all this. You don't have to fully understand his love. He just wants you to believe him. If you've made choices that you're not proud of, choices that you know that have caused a disconnect between you and God, maybe choices that you knew were wrong and you did it anyway, maybe now you're living with shame and regret, maybe you feel those choices are unforgivable, that God would never love you, that he would never pursue you, that he would somehow give up on you. I'm here to tell you otherwise, you are worthy of his love. You know, Jesus died on the cross because you are worthy. He suffered a painful death because you are worth it. And it was for the joy set before him that he endured the cross for you because you are his joy. At Akua, we believe in the power of prayer. And if you would join me in prayer, I'd be so honored to pray over you. Jesus, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you did. God, we thank you for you and your plan of restoration through Jesus. We thank you that Jesus forgave our sins. And we thank you that Jesus takes away the shame that we caused. I just release the spirit of shame right now in the name of Jesus. And I just invite your identity. God, that you would speak your identity over everyone listening right now that they would know that they are worthy and loved and cherished and precious, that they are precious in your sight and that they are not too far gone, that you are reaching out your hand, you are opening up your arms for a hug and all they have to do is believe and embrace you in the way that feels most natural to them. We thank you that you pursue us, that you are speaking to us, It's because you love us. And I just thank you for the good work that you've done and the good work that you're doing in everyone's life here that is listening. We we again thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness and for your gift. And for those that are listening, that are hearing this message for the first time, this is an invitation to receive Jesus. To receive him. He 
He cleanses us of our sins and he puts us right back in right relationship with the Father. And so if you wanna receive Jesus for the first time, I invite you with your best yes to say yes to Jesus. Say, yes, Jesus, I choose to trust you. And you don't have to fully understand it. Just give Jesus your best yes. If you've been believing Jesus, but you've been walking in shame, give Jesus your shame. Say, Jesus, take this. And ask him what he wants to give you instead. Hope, promise, love, identity, peace, a joy. Because God always trades up. And so give him what you were never meant to carry. And he will give you what you were meant to carry. We thank you, God, that you restore relationships. And we thank you for what you're doing right now. And we ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Thanks so much, Bree. Now, everybody in the chat room, will you just give it up for Bree and just pour out all kinds of good vibes and let her know exactly how much you appreciate that. Give some thumbs up, some clapping emojis, maybe like the dancing lady, you know, give her one of those. Uh, just put it in the chat for us. Just thank you so much, Bree, for, for today. And thanks to all of you for being a part of our service here at Akuo. Now, if you need anything at all, don't hesitate to message us on our social media platforms, or you can go to our website, akuo.church, that's A-K-O-U-O.church, to contact us. Now, as we said earlier, this was the last week of the Listen part of our Learn To series. If you missed any of the services, you can always go back and watch them on our YouTube channel. If you like to catch our services uh, while you're in the car or on the go, you can just listen to the services on our audio podcasts. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. Now, while you're on any of these, you can subscribe, like, and rate the sermons and the services that we have going there. By doing this, the algorithms of each site will put us in front of more and more people. So you can help us spread the gospel by doing something very simple. Next. I want to talk about how we practice generosity here at Akuo. What we do is practice the biblical method of giving called tithing, which means giving a first fruit 10% offering to the storehouse, which is your local church. We believe that when you trust God with anything in your life, there is an absolute blessing. And we believe that it's the same with your finances. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to end up with a private jet or anything because you start tithing, but you will definitely receive a blessing. This is one of the areas that we can really trust God and see how he works when we trust in him. This might be one of the ways that God speaks to you is through your finances. And the way that we do that here at Akuo Church is by going to our website, akuo.church. That's A-K-O-U-O dot church. Now, when you get there, all you have to do is click on the giving link and follow the instructions. Okay, so one last thing. Each Wednesday night, we have a Bible study through Zoom. It's a time where we all get together online, we have Abel sing us some worship songs, and then we read through the Bible and pray with one another. Guys, I can't tell you how much fun I have in this group every single week, and we want you to be a part of this. We want you to be a part of this community that we have every single Wednesday night. The link for the Zoom meeting is posted in all of our social media right now. Okay, guys, that's our 11th service. I want you to know that I love each and every one of you, and I'm praying for you all week long. So let me pray over you one last time before we go. So uh, Jesus, as everyone clicks off their browser, turns off their TV, and puts away their phone, I ask that you would be speaking to them in all the ways you like to speak. I pray that you would speak to them through the Bible, through impressions, visions, dreams, angels, small voices, big voices, memories, smells, numbers, uh, colors, peace, miracles, and every other way that you choose to speak to someone, Lord. Jesus, I ask that you would allow them to recognize your movement in each one of these things. Thank you in, for, in advance for what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Jesus, we love you. We love you. We love you. Amen. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you on Wednesday at our Zoom group.